Welcome to Austin Grove Baptist Church to our Wednesday service. So glad to have each of you. I'm coming to you from the banks of Rocky River. Uh, you may notice I'm standing on a, a, a uh, rock about two or three feet high. Uh, the river is uh, just right in front of me, uh, behind the camber here. Uh, you maybe can hear the sounds of the rushing water as the river's up just a little bit. Uh, but we're beginning to see spring give way. If you if you hear a scream, uh, Cindy's going to scream if, uh, if there happens to be a snake that comes out. We have saw a snake frequenting back behind me and so, so I hope she has got good eyesight and watching is real close so that uh, if one comes out I can get away from him real quick so if you see me exit the camera do not be alarmed I will be back uh, with you shortly thereafter we're uh, today we're going to continue in the book of first John the first the second chapter if you got your Bible let me invite you to turn with me the first John the second chapter and we'll begin reading with verse 1 here in just a moment keeping in mind the the themes of the of uh, of this this book is that God is light and uh, and in him can be no darkness God also is the fellowship that we enjoy one with another but also he's love and over and over throughout uh, these books we begin to see the love of Christ the love of the Lord and how he's always there and ever present with us continuously and steadfastly in the name of the Lord uh, there of, of his word being proclaimed to us by way of the Holy Spirit that is showing us and teaching us of all the things that we need to to be aware of but not just be aware of but to to practice, put into practice in our lives. Look with me now at the uh, second chapter, verse one, if you would, where the scripture says, uh, my little children, these things write I to you, and listen to what it says, that you sin not. Why? He's saying here that I'm writing these thing to, things to you to encourage you to live in the right manner in which that God has called each of us to live. To do that which is right, do that which is good. A few weeks ago we, uh, we read in story time, which we have that for our children, uh, on Saturday mornings and uh, we were reading about the Ten Commandments. And these were the commandments that God gave to us, uh, not to tell us to uh, hamper our life and our living, but to enhance our lives so that we're going to be living in the manner in which that God desires for us to do so that he can in turn bless us and bring good things to our lives. Uh, what a joy it is to know the Lord. Look with me as we continue now reading in verse, uh, in verse one, if we may. He says then, and if any man sin, here's what he says, we have an advocate. What's an advocate? If someone's going to stand in for us, who is that person that's going to stand in for us? It's Christ. When you and I stand before the Lord, uh, our Heavenly Father, we want to know that Jesus Christ is there and Jesus is going to say, and he's going to call your name and my name. If, if we have sought the forgiveness and know Christ as Lord and Savior, Jesus is going to say, Father, I've paid his or her price and going to call our names. He's our advocate. He's a person that stands in between us and the Lord and he says, I have forgiven his or her sins. And we need that advocate, folks. We need the advocate of Jesus Christ. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, the scripture says. The scripture says. He is a, a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only. But listen to the next phrase here in verse 2. But also for the sins, and look at these next three words, for the whole world. Jesus paid the price for the whole world's sins, generation after generation. All people, irregardless of what nationality they might be, Jesus paid the price for all of our sins so that and God's will is that every one of us could live eternally with him in heaven. What a loving Lord he is. What a mighty Savior it is that cares so much for us that he desires that all of us would be able to 
live with him forever and to have, find forgiveness of our sins. And he could take away the guilt that, that sin brings into our lives. Let's look as we continue on a little bit further here, if we may. And hereby we do know <clears throat> that we know him. Now this is the ideology and the thinking and the reason and the logic. This is how you can know uh, that you know Christ is that you're keeping his commandments. This is the fruit. The scripture over and over, my Paul would very much write to us and he'd say you need to be uh, a fruit bearer. How are you going to be a fruit bearer? Now, he's not talking about apples, oranges, and peaches, and uh, anything else, any other kind of fruit or whatever. What he's talking about, that you and I are continuing to be able to tell others about Jesus Christ, and that we are doing the will of God, and the call that God has placed upon each of our lives, that that is being accomplished in everyday situations. So important, folks, that we realize that. Let me read the entire verse here in verse 3. Look with me here. Very short verse. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Once again, we've talked about it here in prior services. That word if is conditional. If, if the scripture says that he's saying if we keep his commandments, we can then in turn know that we know him. Look at verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. Listen to what Scripture says. This is the second time in a short 10 or 12 verses here from the first chapter on into the second chapter here that the Scripture uses this terminology. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. The Scripture says, he or she is a liar, and the truth is not in him or her. Folks, we've got to be sure that we know Christ. And if we're not showing evidence of that by knowing, by knowing and doing the commandments of the Lord. As we're meeting uh, in-house on Wednesday nights, and we're meeting at 645 every Wednesday night, we're in the book of Colossians, and uh, uh, the three things that uh, this book is, Paul's writing is saying, hey, you and I need to, to know and to do is simply, you and I need to have knowledge of the Lord. We need to have knowledge of what his word says, of what's right and wrong, and the knowledge of doing that which is right. But not only do we need to have knowledge, we also need to have wisdom to be able to understand what that knowledge says so that we can be that fruit bearer or so that we can be sure that we know in Christ and it's not just knowing about him but have godly wisdom but also we need to have the scripture says as Paul writes he says that third thing you and I need is that you and I need to have a spiritual understanding of what God's word says now how we're we going to have a spiritual understanding we're going to have a spiritual understanding as you and I read God's word we pray about it we allow his word, as we read it, allow the Holy Spirit to help us in discerning what God's word says, but not only what it says, but how we can apply it in our lives and how does this fit into my life or how does this apply to me? You see, God's word is the living word. It's only the living word when you and I are willing to take these words off these pages, put it in my heart and life, and allow God to convict us, <clears throat> to show us, and to direct us to where we can walk right in his eyes. Let's listen as we continue reading here. He that saith, in verse 4, he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And look at the last phrase here in verse 4. He says, And the truth is not in him. What's the truth? We said earlier that in the last, uh, last Wednesday, we said the, the truth, that's Jesus Christ. In John's gospel, Jesus said, I am the, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. We need truth. 
We need to know what truth is in our lives so that we're going to, uh, to do that which is right. Look with me at verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him. In other words, the person that will keep the word of God near and dear and close to his or her heart and that you and I have heard his word, but we've done more than hear it. We placed it in our heart and life, and it means something to us, and it means so much to us that it becomes part of us, and we seek to do what that word, his word says, so that it transforms and it changes our lives and, and the direction of our lives. Because, folks, there are a lot of folks that are headed in the wrong direction. Jesus said, I'm the way. And if you're not headed in the way that Jesus, where Jesus is, you're headed in the wrong direction. We've got to be careful about that. Listen as we continue reading here. Listen as we continue. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God. And listen to this next word, that next word, perfected. If you're keeping the word of God in your heart, in your soul, in the innermost part of your being, and you're keeping it there, and as it stays there and you seek to do what God's called you to do, God is doing a mighty work in your life. He is perfecting his love in yours and my life as we allow his word in our lives, it becomes sweeter and sweeter. As an old hymn, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Folks, a lot of, that's, that's good theology, it's good biblical truth. If you and I are placing his word in the depth of our heart and soul, God is in the business of perfecting it. He's working on us. He's helping us. He's giving us an understanding, a spiritual understanding that we need to apply our lives right where, we, right where we're at to make us a better person. Not good enough to go to heaven. We got to, only way you're going to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. But we're going to be a better person in knowing Christ as his word is placed in our heart and God is perfecting it day by day. Hereby, look at the last phrase here in verse 5, hereby know we that we are in him. As God's word is there and we're living it out, and we're walking and talking, and we're experiencing fellowship with the Lord and walking with Him, you know that we are in Him. Beautiful, folks. Listen to verse 6. He that saith, he abideth in Him. In other words, if you talk the talk, be sure that you're willing to walk the walk. The scripture talks to us and says to us, uh, as a believer, you and I must be willing to pick up our cross daily, deny oneself, and follow him. We do not like to deny oneself. The cross does not seem very appetizing to pick up, but why would, the, why would God's word say that? Because he's saying, as a child of mine, there are many that are going to despise you, and there are many that really are going to have a, a dislike for us because we are his, and, and he is ours. And in, in throughout early Christianity and even today, there are many people that literally they do not get it what it means to live a Christ-filled life. What it means to have full joy in that we talked about in the first chapter here last week or a couple weeks ago. How important it is that you and I, that we have the complete joy in your life and in my life. How important that is. So look at verse, uh, at verse 6 as we see here. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought... He himself also to walk. Do it. If, Christ, if the word of God lives within you, you are to be walking for the Lord. And now notice the last phrase. Even as he walked, as Jesus Christ walked with us. And he showed us and lived by example, folks, that how we ought to walk. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he give you his grace, his fellowship. 
uh, and uh, as, as we seek to, to do that which God has called us to do. So I hope that this week's been a good week. I hope that the next week's even better. If you live in the area, uh, we're in church every Sunday morning. We have a mask only service at, uh, at 9 o'clock. Uh, we have Sunday school at 945. We have a worship service, a mask optional uh, there at 1045 every Sunday. We'd love to have you to come visit with us. Pray with me if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day and the blessings you've given, granted to us, the privilege and opportunity that we have of being together. Lord, just speak to our hearts right where we're at. Help us to walk where you would have us to walk in a way and manner that is pleasing your eyes. Take care of us, Father. Keep us safe. And Lord, may our joy be filled and may our cup be overflowing with your goodness. For we ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Look forward to seeing you in church on Sunday morning. May God bless you.